Okay, our educational course, it's about trying to be a better player, a better teacher, a better coach, better practice partner, better, a better tennis parent. Um, I just wrote a few things on the board. Peter Burwash International years ago, they had a training program that lasted 450 hours. I ran a program, I had the opportunity to revise a general recreation curriculum and make it a full comprehensive degree plan for tennis teachers. We called it Tennis Tech. We had a lab of 240 hours a semester. So for two years, students spent 960 hours in the lab. I tried to teach tennis students to teach tennis for 960 hours. That doesn't include one summer of an internship, plus 50% of their academic time was tennis-related subject matter. And that would add it up to 360. So in a two-year program, it was only 1,320 hours. What happened with many of the students I trained is they were given an education, but their experience didn't necessarily support their education. So it takes this 10,000-hour rule. A great book to read for, for anybody interested in success is A Story of Success by Malcolm Gladwell, Outliers. 10,000 hours. You know, basically, if someone plays three hours a day at tennis, that's 1,000 hours a year. For 10 years, it's 10,000 hours. I would recommend that tennis teachers have a file or they keep a notebook, a notebook for drills, a notebook for verbal cues, uh, buzzwords, um, phra phrases, phraseology. For example, the art is where you start. You can help someone with their forehand. What is the primary flaw? We've gone through that with diagnostic coaching. And then from there, what's the cause of the flaw and what's the cure? And then how many cures? And do we have a file or do we have a notebook for cures, for corrective measures? In one of the earlier segments, we had a young boy who had a ruler on his backhand, and the ruler was taped so his arm had to be straight. We would call that a corrective measure. If you put a penny on the base knuckle of your index finger and then put the penny on the grip. Or you were to tape the hand to a new grip. The little things turn into big things. The, the, the more you can add to your repertoire, say, for example, on the serve, you tell someone to turn. Now they're going to bend, and then they're going to twist. I always tease young kids and I say, remember the last time you were thrown in jail? You have on handcuffs. So you're going to have handcuffs, and now you turn, and the racket is like a roof. And now rain can roll off the roof. Now from here, you comb your hair, you talk on the telephone, you give the ball the high five, and you turn out. You make the letter X. It, add, it all adds up. Top spin. Top spin is a downward motion. It's created with an upward motion of the racket and body. What you're trying to do is express yourself, communicate in a way where your students will remember what you said. Top spin is a downward motion. It's created with an upward motion of the body and racket. So all the little things add up. The phrases, so goes your backswing, so goes the rest of your swing. And you've heard many of these different comments in each segment, each chapter of this course. The merry-go-round, then the ball will rotate like a frisbee. The Ferris wheel, then the ball rotates like a bicycle tire. You tell someone, imagine that you take a little kid's bicycle and you turn it upside down in the garage, and then you're going to come up and you're going to brush the back of the ball. So it takes time. And what you want to do is just keep adding. Just keep adding. If you hear it, just like we tell our students, if you hear it, you're going to have a tendency to forget it. If you write it down, you're going to have a chance to remember it. But if you can say it over and over and over again, with, if I hear something and I think it's just well put, I'll try to repeat it three times. The other day, for example, I was listening to Tony Dungy, uh, the great leader, the inspirational leader, the football coach. Um, he shared a story about 
baseball players playing so many games and not being quite as serious. And he had a legendary baseball player tell him, the umpire doesn't say work ball, they say play ball. Well, I think that's worth remembering, so I'm going to share that. Hey, today I heard Donnie Dungy, and this is a great point he made, and I'm going to repeat it. We want people to repeat the pushing motion on the forehand volley or the lifting motion on the forehand ground stroke or the throwing motion on the serve. And we want our players to become better, and they're going to have to repeat things over and over and over again, and then it adds up. Same thing for us to communicate as uh, coaches and parents. 